Hello, 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 and welcome to Hot and Rich, a show about celebrities. I'm your host, Kate Raft. It is Friday, March 5th, 2021, honey. March the 4th be, or March the 5th be with you, Luke. And Luke, that's... March the 5th be with you. <laughs> and that's the nerdy husband, Jack, with the fucking... Star Wars joke, apparently. Sorry, I got a mouthful of hummus over here. My bad. That's not an excuse. Mm. You, you say that like it's an excuse. It's not. Okay, we got from the hummus guys today. We got some two normal hummuses. And what else did we get? Um. Oh, a spinach artichoke garlic dip. And guess what? That's a garlic-based, you know, thing. It uses garlic instead of the, um, you know, the the what the hell are they called? The, the beans that they use? Chickpeas. It, it, yes, it uh, uses garlic instead of chickpeas. And tell you what, that is real garlic It's garlicky. Um, yeah, you guys are all lucky that this is not a olfactory experience. Because my breath is stanky. You're lucky. If, you're, if you are a vampire... Well, you better feel good that this is not an olfactory experience. Okay, Jack. Okay. Um, happy Horny Friday, everybody. We've got an amazing show for you today. Later in the show, Jackie Johnson, the host of Natch Butte, is going to join us. We're going to talk about celebrity dog walking in honor of Lady Gaga's dog walker, who recently recovered from being shot. Ryan Fisher, I believe, is his name. Anyway, so we're gonna we're gonna have Jackie on as a guest. I'm super excited because I love Jackie. She's a true delight, and you guys are gonna love her if you don't already know her. I mean, she's like she's big time. You know, that's this is a big get for me for a little big podcast get. like me. Big old big get. This is a big get for Hot and Rich. We don't this get like, a lot of gets. This is this is like almost like you know, it's almost like a French bread or something like that. A big get. A baguette. A big get. A big get. Um, yes, I'm very excited for Jackie to come. Also, I have many of Jackie's old pillows because she was moving once and gave them to me. We had an old bong of Jackie's, uh, but I threw it away because it was too gross. Well, it wasn't gross when I got it. I Jack made it, made it gross. It gross. Oh, we used I, to have. I, I got it real gross. <laughs> we used to have Jackie's bong. She gave me her bong. Um. Anyway, we love Jackie. She's the best. Super excited to have her on in the second half of the show here today. Um, But let's kick things off with just a little personal news. I watched the Golden Globes. They were terrible. Truly just awful. Well, if you don't have anything nice to say, perhaps you shouldn't say anything at all, Kate. Listen. You're right. I should shut up. No, I was just mucking no, about. No, no, that's, no, no, no. That's, that's me saying that? The, no, you're right. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to just say the Golden Globes happened. Okay. They happened. The Golden Globes happened. Okay, we can't deny the truth. They happened. But that's all I got to say. Yes, the rest isn't nice. The rest ain't nice. <laughs> I did live tweet the Golden Globes. I kind of got bored and stopped towards the end. But let me tell you, the Sia movie with the offensive portrayal of an autistic girl by Maddie Ziegler did not win anything. So if you're you know, wondering heard, about that. I heard, a, I heard a crazy days and nights rumor. What? That, that, uh, that like the Golden Globes were not as voted. And that like things like changed because it would have caused a lot of controversy. I saw they that. Change the votes. I saw that blind item, Jack. You should pull up the exact blind item. I want I'm you to try read to it. Find it. Here. Find it. I want you to read it. Yeah, I believe this honestly. Like I, ever since listening to that True Anon Patreon episode with NT, the guy who runs Crazy Days and Night Nights, I'm like, I may, I'm smitten. I'm maybe like. I'm not, I don't want to say I'm in love with Enti, but I'm like, Enti is like God tier celebrity reporting. Like, 
because Listen. it's all unsubstantiated and so and much it's of it, true. It's so much true. of it feels like so true. Though, it's all you know? true. That's it's the, like the, that's the real reality. It's like of the it. shit they can't publish in the actual press. Like it's so good. Oof. Yeah. Um, did you find it? I'm working on it. There, it's hard because they're all called blind items. I know. <laughs> like a blind item number one. I'm I'm going through for the week. I'm I'm trying to find my best. Well, just here. pipe in when you find it. But I do want to say I had a dream. I know people don't like Jack, especially hates when I talk about my dreams because it's like, I get it. Who cares? We don't want to hear your dreams, Kate. Your dreams don't matter. And to that I say, well, it's my show, and I'm going to tell you what I dreamt this week because I've been sleeping like a baby. First of all. I've been doing yoga every day and sleeping really well. Not to brag, but I'm just in a really great place right now, you know, and I feel like we should celebrate mm. me. We should mm-hmm. celebrate my sleep being well. You know, we should celebrate me being on my self-care journey and succeeding for once in a lifetime. And I've been sleeping really well, so I've had this, I've had like not stress dreams for once. Like I'm starting to have like good dreams again. And I had this dream that was, about me befriending Angelina Jolie and I like hung out with her and I kind of in the I kind of knew in the back of my mind like I'm just hanging out with her for like clout and to like get access to her really sick mansion in the hills like I knew that in the dream I was like fuck like should I feel bad about this because like I don't really like her I'm just like hanging out with her for clout and then in the dream, she was like really depressed, like super sad. And she was like a massive alcoholic in my dream, like just drinking a ton. And I remember like drinking a lot with her and being like, I know I'm enabling her and I know she's an alcoholic, but like I really want that hot tub. I don't know what that says about me, but like it was <laughs> it was actually like a good dream, like <laughs> like a great dream. I like, had a dream. <laughs> that was a fun dream. Anyway. So I had that dream about me and Angelina Jolie, like me kind of enabling her addiction and like not being very good, like being like a classic kind of Hollywood fake friend. And um, and like then she comes into the news. Like this happened the next day. I, I wow. feel like I, I dreamed this into existence. Oh, another part of the dream before I get to this article was that Angie was like, going broke because she like hadn't worked in a while and now i'm like did my dream was my dream right like is angelina jolie like hurting for cash right now because i saw this article on page six that says angelina jolie sells off winston churchill painting from brad pitt for 11.5 million dollars that's a big chunk of change she sold an expensive painting i feel like when rich people sell paintings you're like oh they like they need some money, right? That's what paintings are really about. If you buy a Winston Churchill painting, it's like it's like buying real estate. It's like an investment or something, right? Okay, so here's the crazy days and nights thing. It's very short. Okay. The, the tabulated winners from last night's count had nothing in common with the awards presented last night. They knew there would be a ton of bad publicity if they left the results alone. I fully believe that. Totally believe that. I bet like music won stuff and Emily in Paris won stuff. And they changed it. And probably Hamilton won. <laughs> no. Anyway, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, you know what I mean? Like when you when you have an expensive painting, that's like, yes, yeah, someone in the chat said money laundering. Yokohama Bunny said it. It's like the same with real estate. Like you can launder a bunch of money through buying stuff like art and real estate, right? It's like that's having like... Say. It's like having a drawer full of cash that you can pull out at any moment. Right? I don't really know how finance works. With with um, paintings? With it's like an rich, asset. It's rich, an asset. rich yes. people, like assets. You hold, it, you hold it as an asset, and it's like basically money that you have. Assets. That's the word, baby. That's assets. why all sorts of stupid art gets bought for a lot of money, because it just is like... You know, it's like real estate or something. It's I, just there to hold the money. I would love if someone could decide that my art was real estate. By the way, everybody, I make art. Okay, I'm a painter on top of all this shit. So some rich person, why don't you decide to buy one of my paintings and make it an asset? For crying out loud. How, I, bought how, an, I, bought, I bought a couple assets this very morning. Of what? I got three gifts of uh, NBA guys doing dunks. 
You did. Mm-hmm. How much are you spending on these? I spent nineteen dollars on it, and that's the only one I've been able to get so far. Okay. And guess what? One of the dunks is worth a hundred dollars. Great, Jack. I'm so proud so of actually, you. Actually, my assets are extremely good. <laughs> Well, did Winston Churchill make one of the gifts? No. That's not very good art, by the way, by Winston Churchill. Um, yeah, what is this painting called? I forget. It's like... I forget what it's called, but it's like a painting of like a mosque or something. It's kind of boring. It's like a landscape. I don't know. What is that a landscape, technically? I have no idea. Um, yeah, Winston Churchill. I didn't even know he painted you know, if you ever get famous, you should just start painting because, like, someone will buy it. Like, even it worked for John Wayne Gacy. My dad just texted me. What did he say? All right, I'm not going to read it. Anyway, <laughs> I should edit that out. Who cares that my dad texted me? All right, should we get into any topics? I mean, we got to get Jackie on the phone, so we should speed through these topics. Okay. First up, Nick Cage is married. He's 56. He has now married his partner, Rico Shibata. Wow. She's 25 years old. She looks very young, I will say. And may they give birth to a a little Kalel of their own. What? He named his kid Kalel or something at one point, which is after Superman. I guess I believe it. (laughs) She looks so young, like. His his son Kalel Coppola Cage is now 15 years old, and he's getting in movies. Kalel is like what they call Superman, right? Well, that's Superman's Kryptonian name, of course. <laughs> See, so glad we have this nerdy husband here to tell us to like translate the news. Ah, uh, March the fifth be with you. Nick Cop- Coppola is his real last name, right? That's correct. Because he's a Coppola. Coppola family, you know, that's that's one family where the nepotism's okay with me. Because they're pretty talented. Talia Shire, that's a good actress. Sophia Coppola, <laughs> I could give her, t- I could leave her take. But, Are you kidding you know. me? She made the bling ring. And Marie Antoinette, we love Sophia in this house. Okay. I love Sophia. I liked that movie that was kind of like not really a movie that she made about like being a celebrity. So is anyone daughter. going to try to claim Lost in Translation? Do you dare no, 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 try no, no, to no, claim no. Lost in Translation in 2021? No. Do you even dare? Oh, my God. This is not a cinema podcast, you fucking fuck. So, I'll leave it there. So shut up with that shit. Um, I never saw The Virgin Suicides. <laughs> And maybe I will one day, but I'm not a movie person, okay? I don't care. I'm a reality TV watcher, okay? Call me Kirsten Cinema, because I love the damn films. Oh, my God. We're not talking about that either. Fuck. <laughs> okay, Jack. I just told Jack today about the song Driver's License. Oh, Probably, my like, God. Like, three months too late. But I finally told Jack about driver's license and Thank God. and Olivia Rodrigo. Like I taught him about it. I gave him a crash course on Jack AM this morning. And then I saw that Olivia Rodrigo was in the news because she said, this hurts. She said Pete Davidson is her biggest celebrity crush. She just turned 18. She's, you know, she's his type. Let's just say it, okay? She's his type. She's petite, pretty. Ariana Grande esque, like, uh, Olivia, like, don't. This is like, oh no, don't do it. Like, you know they're gonna go out now, right? Like, as soon as like a hot young celebrity says like, I like Pete Davidson, like he goes out with them. That's how it happened with Ariana. Uh, I don't want this to happen. <laughs> Even though I. I'll fucking, I'll cop to that I think Pete Davidson is hot, okay? I, oh, shoot. I'll admit it. I I know it's, I shouldn't think that, but I do think that. It's one of my flaws that I think he's hot 
And guess what? He is hot. But Olivia, I don't want you to date him, okay? I just don't. I don't want it. I don't want it. She gave some interview where she said, what did she say? She said, Pete Davin, Pete Davidson, who is my biggest celebrity crush, was singing it and comparing me to Taylor Swift, who is my idol. It was just insane. It was on my 18th birthday, too. So it was just a crazy day, end quote. I feel like, are you sh- kind of shoehorning in that you're 18 now, Olivia? Are you being like... Are you kind of subtly being... Uh, I don't want to put this on her. because She's so young and sweet. I think she's sweet. I mean, I don't know her. She's a famous pop singer child. But like... She gave this quote that was like, I like Pete Davidson. He's my crush. By the way, I'm 18. Like... Uh, just don't do it. Don't do it! <laughs> don't date Pete Davidson. I don't know why. I mean, fucking do whatever you want. I guess I don't really care, but... Also, I care, you know? You know? Yeah. I got nothing to say on the matter. Jack, you just learned about Olivia Rodrigo, and you have nothing to say? No. Did you even know they did an SNL sketch about the song? No, and I'm very glad not to know. I'm glad not to know about the entire affair. The song, the parody of the song. I'm so glad to not know any of it. Okay, then. Great. Well, let, maybe you'll have a thought thoughts on this next week. You know, maybe you need, uh, you know, Yokohama Bunny in the chat says it takes time to form an opinion. So maybe it Jack does. Just need, needs to marinate on this. Well, let's check in next week after a little bit more marination. Let's marination on this. Okay. Now we're going to talk about a Kim Ye divorce update. Kim's getting the house. I called it. Am I ever fucking wrong about the Kardashians? Am I ever fucking wrong about the Kardashians? No, I'm always right about the Kardashians. Come to Hot and Rich to get the truth about the Kardashians because I'm literally never wrong. I'm never wrong about the Kardashians. I called this months ago. I said Kim's going to get the house. Guess what, guys? She got the house. TMZ reported on it. I've got nothing else to say other than I'm right. I'm always right. Okay. Next topic. Lori Laughlin has been spotted doing community service. She's, I think she's doing like Project Angel food or something. Listen, don't get too excited. Are you sure those aren't extracurricular activities to Photoshop Olivia Jade into? Oh, my God. Really, Jack? Just making a bit of a joke. <laughs> really, Jack? I'm just making a bit of a joke. Um, I think this is court-mandated community service, but also I do think that her reps called the paparazzi on her so that we could get these really wholesome photos of her, you know, wearing, like, I forget what her hat and shirt say, but they're promoting charities and she's trying to do crisis PR and Hey, it's all gravy, baby. She's, um, putting food into a truck. And in the, in the articles I read about this, it said that she's doing extra hours of community service. She's going above and beyond the required hours. Honestly, that might help you, uh, I don't know, get into, uh, USC. Do you think Lori's going to try to go back to school? What's she going to study? Um, I need a little more time to form an opinion. <laughs> Jack! Is that just going to be your thing now? You have no opinions. You need time to form them. Business ethics says surplus value theory in the chat. Sure. Okay, and we have to we have to fucking talk about Ilaria, Ilaria had a surprise baby. Jack, this is uh, fucking crazy. That's a lot of them. Ilaria. What is, what is that? What is that? Seis, siete. Ilaria, ella tiene siete, no, seis hijos. She's got six kids. She had a baby, you know, she birthed a baby in in. September of last year, five months ago. And this week she announced she's got another one. And she waited way too long to be like, it was a surrogate. 
because she wanted us all to guess because she likes to be in the headlines, especially when the headlines are not about her faking her fake Spanish heritage. Hillary. Hillary. Oh, my God. This is so crazy because it means that she had a surrogate get pregnant when she was already what, like five months pregnant? No. How, how many months? I can't do the math, but Hillary was pregnant. And during the pregnancy decided, you know what, let's overlap and get a surrogate knocked up with our embryo so that we have almost twins, like five months apart twins. Yes, they did it because they wanted a girl because gender is very important, folks. You know, the sex of your babies is so important that you should have as many as possible until you get the amount of uh girl babies that you want it's very important um it's so important <laughs> it's definitely worth pumping out child after child listen can i shame hilaria for having six kids am i allowed like i'm genuinely asking because i want to but i don't know if i'm allowed I, like desperately want to be like this is makes me want to puke <laughs> like it's too many kids it's like when you look at the duggars you're like oh it's like too many. Like you're not supposed to see like that many. Like you're not. It's not. It's too many. It's like I don't want to see like this many versions of Alec Baldwin's fucking face. It makes me want to die. I hate it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know if this is. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. <laughs> I like really don't know if I'm allowed to be saying this, but it makes me very ill to see that many. Like, you know, like slot machine combos of Alec Baldwin and Hilaria. I don't want to see that many. <laughs> what? Oh, that's quite a few little piggies. <laughs> I have a whole litter of little piggies. Oh, it's Hilaria. true. You've you've cranked out another little piggy for me. It's like oh, gross. Oh, Hilaria, my my exotic bride. He still, like, thinks, I swear to God, he still thinks she's from Spain. Like, they keep posting Instagrams. Like, he posted an Instagram. I don't have a screenshot, but he posted an Instagram, Alec Baldwin, of all the kids, and he wrote, Mi Vida. And then they post another screenshot of them, like, uh, vida. talking to the kids in Spanish. It's like, these people <laughs> actually, he actually still believes she's Spanish. Like, I swear to fucking God. The Baldwinitos are not going anywhere. Anyway, like Alec quit Twitter and it's this whole fucking thing. Cause like he made, you know, Gillian Anderson kind of slipped into a British accent at one point or something. And he, and he kind of made some, I don't even know what it was. Some cheeky comment like, Ooh, interesting. And then he, you know, people were like, I don't even fucking know. I missed most of this controversy, but I, I know he quit Twitter and made this video. Driving home from work. <laughs> I have to say, I, I love that Alec Baldwin is like a vlogger now, and it's very funny to me. And I hope he never stops making these like, like selfie camera videos where he like talks in his weird, like raspy, quiet voice. It's very funny to me. I hope he never stops. I think he's maybe one of my favorite vloggers of all time. We have to just like, we have to just like watch some of this. Anchors in that. Overseas and says, "Hey, man, everybody, cooler with the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, don't speak any foreign languages, please, and let's have some hot dogs for dinner and blah blah blah." Anyway, um, I deactivated my Twitter account. <laughs> um, I, I, uh, I think it's uh, it's a shame, but I'm going to find another news aggregation source, and. I it's so great. This video is so great. It's just him being like, I've quit Twitter. Everyone's an asshole. The Americans, the American people, the culture here, they don't know how to be so good in the American culture. Like, he thinks he's Spanish, too. He thinks he's, like, not American. He's like, these Americans, they don't understand that you can love a culture and then say that you're from that place. They just don't get it here in America, these assholes, these idiots. Jack, do your impression. It's so good. Oh, my Lord, I'm so angry I'm going to have to drive through a McDonald's. I think I might order the spicy Cajun nuggets today. They're caliente, like my exotic bride. 
and the little piggy she cranks out. The little piggies are uh, my Miss Miss Little Cerdas. Miss Cerdas y Cerdos. I love my exotic little piggies. Stop, Jack. You gotta stop. Uh, you gotta uh, stop. My Miss Little Tocinos. Miss Tocinos. What's Tocinos? <laughs> Bacon. <laughs> I can't deal. <laughs> can you just say consider the source, please? Consider the source. <laughs> oh my god, that's so good. That's so fucking good. Okay, really quick, we gotta get Jackie on the phone. I told her I'd call her at 7.30. We have to talk about what the fuck is going on with Meghan Markle. I think... I'm team no one here because, listen, I'm not a Meghan Markle stan or anything. But some crazy shit's happening. And it it's crazy. It's crazy what's happening. Like I said, I'm team no one, but we have to talk about this. So Meghan's got this like $8 million Oprah interview coming out, I think, next week. And it's super hyped. I think the ads on it are going to be like more expensive than the Super Bowl or something because everyone wants to watch this Oprah interview. It's going to be on CBS. Mm. and um the they're i guess gonna do a tell-all where they like call out buckingham palace sure they're trying to be like they're trying to do the like obama grift you know like they're trying to get they're you know they are they have like an 150 million dollar netflix deal or something so they have to do press and this is like a big part of i think they're like kind of public coming out i don't hate Meghan markle by any means like i I think that like there's been a lot of racism hurled her way and it's very valid. Um, There's this narrative now being pushed specifically by Buckingham Palace that says she was like horrible to her staffers and that what, what, what the Daily Mail reported on it. I have the screenshot here. It says Megan is, is accused of driving out two personal assistants and shattering the confidence of another staff member that she bullied them, um, blah, 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 blah. Do I think she's me? Pos- do I think it's possible she was mean to her staff? Of course. Like every celebrity, every rich person, like for the most part, I think you can count on at least a handful of terrible interactions to, to the people that they work with. As someone who's been a Hollywood assistant, I can say that that's probably true for almost every person above a certain tax bracket. That's how assistants are treated. It's terrible. It's not okay. But yeah, it happens. And I I would believe that she did that. But I think this narrative is being pushed by Buckingham Palace because they like don't want this interview to come out. They've tried to push it in the British press. They're like not going to air it until Prince Philip like recovers from a surgery or some shit. And they don't want to talk about Prince Andrew, who's literally like a sexual predator. And like BFFs with Epstein and Delane. So yeah, it's complicated. I'm kind of sweat at the time. It couldn't be true. He didn't. He wasn't sweating back then. I have to say, I'm Team Princess Diana's bracelet in all of this because Meghan Markle is wearing Princess Diana's bracelet during the interview, and I'm Team Princess Diana's bracelet. She said that he was sweating, and at the time he didn't sweat because of the Falkland War. It's just like so fucked up that we never talk about Prince Andrew. Like it's always like Meghan Markle. They want everyone to be talking about Meghan Markle because they like desperately don't want us to talk about Prince Andrew. Like, well, uh, honestly, d- why would we talk about the not sweating man? What's there to talk about? He didn't sweat at the time. He didn't sweat at the time. Oh, I hate him so much. That fucking Prince Andrew. And he's the queen's favorite child. That's why. Prince Andrew's the queen's favorite child. Anyway, I'm all here for Meghan and Harry dragging the crown. Like, yes, like, you should. Like, it sucks. The royal family fucking sucks forever since the beginning of time. So, like, burn it all down. Why not? Oprah is a good person to do that with, I I guess. I mean, I don't know. She's, like, the biggest person you could get to interview you, at least, like, in modern entertainment. I don't know. Did Oprah go to the wedding? I feel like she did. 
I'm all here for dragging the monarchy. I think is anytime you can knock the monarchy down a peg, it's a net positive. So that I'm and I'm team Princess Diana's bracelet. Oh, also Megan's pregnant. I hope you know. Wow, with a little commoner, how sad. Yeah, they're not royals anymore. That's gonna be a non royal baby. <laughs> a little nothing baby. <laughs> Jack It's a commoner. Oh my God. Okay, we're gonna take Probably a sweats and everything. We're gonna take a quick break and when we come back. We'll have Jackie Johnson on the show to talk celebrity dog walking. So don't go get, 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 get anywhere. Oh, but, 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 we'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, everybody. I am so excited to announce this guest. She is amazing. Podcasting legend. And just a wonderful person. Friend of mine in real life. I have her pillows in my house. She gave me many pillows. And um, so she's kind of a pillow goddess also. I don't know if people know that about her. Um, welcome to the show, comedian, actor, host of Natribute, Jackie Johnson. Hi. Jackie, thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm so excited that you're here. How are the pillows doing? The pillows are fantastic. I'm so glad. I don't. I honestly don't even remember everything I gave you. So it was you're like, welcome. You were in the you middle of bong. moving. You gave us a bong. That yes, I, 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 I remember destroyed. that. I'm, I made two gross and, and sadly had to throw away. Sorry about that. R.I.P. R.I.P. <laughs> the bong. Um, there's one pillow you gave me that I sleep with every night. It's like a body pillow. It's like a big oh, yeah. velvet yellow body pillow. Oh, yes. I remember. It's from Target. It's from that beautiful collection they did a few years ago the like house with an h-a-u-s you know Ooh, when you spell yeah. house like that it Halls. you know it's good Halls. Halls. the hall it's very gaga which we're gonna get to in a sec yeah it's very gaga um yes. but yeah like you gave me but you were moving so you just like ha started handing me stuff like i came there for an air conditioner but then i left with like pillows a bong a bunch of skincare products it was a great day for me it was a great day for me <laughs> Yeah, right. I had a lot of shit to get rid of. I basically started my life anew, you know? I mean, I'm proud of you, Jackie. You're killing it. Thank you. You just got married. I have to say congratulations. Thank congratulations. You. Thank you. I did. I got married, honey. Number I, two, round two. <laughs> you looked stunning in round two. Best round yet. <laughs> Definitely best round yet. You, you, got, you went to Austin to get married. Okay, so I have to admit that I was so I wanted to hear about your wedding because you know I'm like a wedding person I care about yes. this stuff your wedding was fucking iconic iconic thank you thank you your I really look is literally one of the favorite wedding looks I've ever seen wow I just got I literally just got chills like all over my body from hearing you say that so thank you it's did you get blogs you should have if you didn't I didn't try hard enough like I yeah. I was too burnt out because the wedding I did it all myself oh, like, yeah. I didn't it's have a, a coordinator I did the yeah. whole wedding by myself so oh. I I didn't it's get any more press. impressive I didn't get any press because I was like literally tired I was just tired. yeah but that look that the headpiece the suit fucking iconic truly thank you and I know us millennials throw that word around but it really was I mean it every time I say it I do too um, so I stalked your wedding on like, you know, the various social media accounts that were posting about it. And then I, you said you did a podcast, you did someone else's podcast and that I listened to the full episode just to hear the story of your wedding. Wow. I would have told it to you. You could have just texted me or something. I know, but like, it was just, you already told it to a podcast. So I just, that's true. I just <laughs> listened to the podcast. Cause I was like, I want to hear this. Why, so why, why I talk agree. to anyone who no, appears I, on podcasts? All really? I do, my only socialization at this point is pods. So Same. I completely get that. Yeah. So I listened to this podcast, so I know everything about your wedding now. And it's like a mo it's like a weird, mo like surreal movie or something, because you went to Austin for the wedding and it was supposed to be like at this cute chapel. But then the storm hit and it was like, yeah, you got snowed in and it was like really intense. And like, what's the name of the podcast? People are asking in the chat. They want to listen so, to it. OK, That's so beautiful. I'll just I'm going to. I'm going to give a plug real quick because on my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash Jackie Johnson, you can hear an episode I completely devoted just to it that I did by myself. Oh, even better. So, 
But this, the bot, and it's way more detailed. Okay, and I'll I'm going to send you the link. No, no I'm Kate. I'll just send you the link. I'm going to subscribe. I want to <laughs> pay you for that content. But you can also watch my wedding video on my Patreon. I invited a lot of my Patreon to the wedding. They got to watch it. Stop. I did a, I did like a Zoom. Yeah. My Patreon is a very intimate place. That is literally so genius. Like I, I should have sent you the link. I mean, a ton of people watched it. I, if I would have known, I would have sent you and Jack the link. Y'all could have you know been what? there. Jackie, I should have asked. I should have asked because I really wanted it. I really did want it. Yeah, I mean, I sent it to a lot of people that are sort of like you, like a, a colleague in the comedy world, you know. And Jack and my husband used to work together. So I know. He and he is obsessed with Jack. Literally, <laughs> he is Jack's biggest fan. He talks about Jack all the time. He reads his tweets out loud to me. He talks about how he's a genius, how he's hilarious. Like, so he would have loved to have Jack on the call. Oh my I, god. I'm now mad that y'all weren't there. But I'll send you the video. I mean, if you're interested. Oh my god, I'm gonna watch it. Everybody subscribe to Jackie's Patreon. What's the link? It's patreon.com slash Jackie Johnson. Uh, you can watch my wedding video. You can, uh, you can, I mean, everything. I posted my engagement video, the, like, the, the video where I was surprised with my engagement. I mean, I get real intimate on my Patreon. Oh, my God. I love that. I love that. So just know if you come, you need to be, you need to be cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, be cool, obviously. Like, everybody here is cool. Don't worry. Like, Okay, I have a feeling. We have a very small but very cool that's little group. That's my vibe. Yeah, that's my vibe too. Very small, very cool. Do I wish there were more of us here in the hot and rich community? Absolutely tell a friend. Well, you know what? That Guerrilla marketing, you know? For everybody tell one person. It's and then true. next week, everybody tell one person. But and only, one cool person. Only, only one cool person. Only one cool person. Only one cool person. Don't just yeah. tell everybody about the podcast. Not some jerk. Don't tell some jerk about it. Okay. Nobody no. But jerks for... need not apply. <laughs> okay, so everybody, I mean, I'm going to binge your whole Patreon this weekend because I want all the wedding content. I love, I just like, I, you know, I've, I, we, we ship, we stand Jackie and Ben over here. Gorgeous couple. He loves both of you. I, the other day I was sitting next to Ben as we are never more than about two feet apart. Um, and I was like, oh, you follow Kate? And he's like, oh, yeah, I just followed her. And I was like, I fucking love love her i think you're such a genius i love all your art okay so so i decide i want to be a celebrity dog walker i start googling i go on all these websites i uh i write cover letters and i just start emailing and i get a re reply and uh this woman's like we never hire anybody we only hire somebody like once every five years and and we met up and she said the reason she picked me was because she's a single mom. And I wrote about how I had a million dogs growing up because my parents were divorced. And like my mom just would always say yes. And I'd have all these dogs. And I guess because I said something about a single mom, she like picked my letter out of like the 40 she got that day. Oh, my God. So Kismet. everybody get get personal with those cover letters. Oh, always, always. And if you have to make up a single mom story, oh, too, like that's it. fine. Do what you got to do. Tear jerker. Yeah. So I started walking dogs. And it started out where I would walk celebrity dogs and I wouldn't know who it was. They sort of like wouldn't tell me. Sometimes I would go to the house and open the door and it would just be like Adina Menzel standing in her thong. And I'd be like, oh shit, I didn't know I was at Adina Menzel's house. You know what I mean? Like they wouldn't tell me. So is that a real example or are you changing the celebrity because you That's, can't? So that actually is a real example. Um, but there are some very famous people and I will say in the news lately as well that I cannot say because I did sign my life away, but some of them I will share. And some of them I also feel comfortable giving vague but pretty obvious clues. Okay. You know what give I mean? Because I feel like I can't go to jail for that. Give me as much as you can give me. I, I, I want to, I'm going to lap it up. You know, I'm like yeah. dying right now. Yeah. Well, it was a wild time and, um, I never, I did lose a dog once. And we put out a reward for the dog and then the dog was found. And that was a whole thing because in LA dog nabbing is like a side job for people. So this is a, what happened to Gaga's dogs is like a part of like this whole industry in LA. There's yes. like a, there's like a dog theft ring. Yes. There is a dog napping, nabbing ring. And because it's quick and easy return money. Basically, I don't think the guy who held them up knew those were Lady Gaga's dogs. I think he saw Frenchies. He knows Frenchies mm -hmm. are essentially like a Prada handbag. You know what I mean? Like they're right. designer. They ain't cheap. 
and you could resell them for money. But also, if you steal a dog out of a car or, you know, it's tied up outside of Sprouts, you can get 10K quickly. And they always say no questions asked because they don't want anybody to be too afraid to bring the dog back. They want their dog alive. So this is, and I'm not encouraging anybody to steal dogs Holy by shit. any means, but this is a thing. This is a thing. And it's the money always comes from the rich person wanting the dog back, not from like selling the dog. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. Somebody said the dogs are chipped. So yes, if you, if you take a dog to a vet, it can run the, it can run the chip, but there's ways to like hack the chip and erase it. Um, depending on what type of chip you have, you can wipe them or certain vets don't check for certain chips. So it's kind of a fucked up system. Okay, I have to ask before we get into like the the dirty and vague details of your dog walking clients. Yeah. What do you think? Do you have like an any like if you had to guess what happened with Gaga's dogs cuz they just showed up like some lady dropped them off and it was yeah, like Yeah, I know what. I don't Okay, so this is what I think happened. I think the guys were going to sell those dogs, right? They saw three Frenchies, one is a puppy. You can get I mean, you could get 5K for each of those easy. Oof, okay. So he held the guy up, and then when they shot him, they were like, we're fucked. We have shot somebody. He might be dead, right? Why would they? This is what I'm like. Why would they shoot someone over dogs? Like, that's crazy Well, I think it was an accident. I don't think, I think it escalated. and Because the guy, have you heard the tape? No, I didn't know there was a tape. Yeah, they played it on Howard um, Stern. Oh, my God. I oh, we all know, we all day. know, we all, you, we're yeah, yeah. all on our first name There's basis with Howard. Howard. There's only one Howard. So they played the tape and I don't, I think it was like a TMZ weird thing. I think it came from a security. Yeah. Somebody said it's a security footage. He starts screaming, which good for him because that is the, if you ever get mugged or anything, I really think screaming helps because then more people are going to find out or whatever. But then the guy panicked and shot him. Right. Oh so that's my. the risk you take. He screamed, the guy shot him, they ran off, and I think they drove away and they were like, we're fucked, we shot somebody, we need to bail because we could go to jail now. This is serious shit. There's a trail now, there's a fucking bullet, whatever. And they just tied the dogs up and bolted because the lady found them tied up semi nearby, I think. That's what I Okay, okay. I'm no Carmen Sandiego. Wow. But that's That's, my take. I believe you. I think you're probably right. I think it's like, it's like, I can't imagine like, it's just like the craziest situation. Like taking a bullet for your boss's dogs is like, right. is like, I mean, yeah, I never took any bullets. I got bit twice. I have two permanent scars on my body from dogs. Really? Is it yeah. a crazy story? No. One is this little Maltese. Um, the woman owned a, a clothing store on Beverly drive and he just was in a bad mood one afternoon and he bit my damn arm. And then this other couple, I hated them. I'm going to be honest. I fucking hated them and I hated their dog. Their dog was an asshole and they were a really weird couple. They, and I commend people for adopting dogs. I really do. I honestly don't even believe in buying a dog. So I give them this, they rescued a dog, but the dog was bad. Right. And he was aggressive and he killed their cat. So when you went into their house, oh my they, were like, do, they were like, do not open that door because the cat is in there. And if the dog and the cat ever interact, he will fucking eat the cat. So never open the door. But that was a disaster waiting to happen. Somebody opened the door one day and the fucking dog attacked and killed the cat, which is <laughs> horrific. And I hate that. But it was just this dog was a ticking time bomb. It bit the shit out of me. It bit the shit out of me. I have a scar on my leg. And I told my boss, I was like, I'm never walking that dog again. And I had to like go to the merge room. And I had, I didn't have insurance. This was like, I was broke. You know, I was like a 22 year old kid, like whatever. Right. Right. Like, I had to get a tetanus shot and all this shit. Okay. So like, I'm just like hoping Gaga better be paying for that guy's like hospital oh, of course bills. She is. Oh, of course she is. Right. And like, that shit wasn't cheap. And he's going to need trauma recovery therapy. I mean, he, years of therapy. He's going to need years of therapy. He, like I can't even and he's still not recovered I think he's still like my dog's oh, yeah, barking he's laid up. up um he's okay up so somewhere. was the couple with the crazy dog were they famous no okay so they were like they were a working so the guy was an actor and the woman was a writer and I'm not going to say what they wrote on she wrote on like something similar to like NCIS New Orleans but okay. not NCIS New Orleans you gotcha. know something like that okay. and he was like a uh like a 
H list actor. Okay. Yeah. Nobody you would know. Okay. But now can we get into like, what are your best celebrity dog walking stories? Like hit me. Okay. Yeah. I'm ready. I have one. I have one. I have one. Okay. I cannot say who this is. Somebody very famous and who has been in the news recently. Hot hot actress okay hot iconic actress okay and you were dog walking in what year this was 2000 probably 12 so hot then and hot now can i ask that i would say she's held up she's okay. definitely held up okay. she was a she was a teen actress that's all i'm gonna say okay okay i signed i signed my life away i don't want you to get in trouble so just don't tell me I more signed than you can. my life away so I, uh, I go up to the house and I knock on the door and I hear, who is it? And I go, oh, hi, it's Jackie. I'm here for the dogs. And she goes, oh, thank God. It's just you. Opens the door. She's wearing the smallest towel you've ever seen. I'm talking like a face cloth towel, like a, a towel you would wash your face with, but covering her body, dripping wet out of the shower hottest person I've ever seen in my life. Wow. Bare, almost completely naked. Best body I've ever seen. Wow. I mean, like truly the hottest woman that's ever been in my presence, barely in anything and just stand there talking to me. And I'm like trying to not lose it. I'm like, this is, this is like a porn movie. Beginning. Holy shit. Like, this, the dog walker walks in. Oh, I'm sorry. I just got out of the shower. This is like literally like a girl on girl porn scene. Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, I'm sorry. I ran out of real towels. So I'm just using my face wash towel that barely covers my beautiful breasts and pussy. Oh, my God. I mean, God. it was really intense. And I'm just like, yeah, hubbity, hubbity, yeah, hubbity, hubbity, you know? And she's also famous. Famous. Ugh. So it's like, not only is she hot, but she's famous and i'm like uh, how are you you know and i i said the stupidest shit to my super famous clients i just said to her one time i go your dog is such a nice head <laughs> wow and she goes oh thank you like the super super famous people they can take weird shit because they get weird shit said to them all the time you know oh, yeah. so every time i would say something really weird to her she handled it like a champ and you're not like normal when you're that hot and famous and rich like you're you're she not seemed really normal she was naked ba with barely a towel yeah. covering her yeah but i'm saying like all my interactions with her she was sweet she was down to earth she was friendly they got me a really generous christmas present every year i mean it was they were absolutely wow. lovely they were lovely oh my god i love that i and love by that they, i mean she was she's married to somebody very famous too that's the only hint i'm giving <laughs> Wait, keep guessing in the chat. We, I won't, no one will respond, but I want to keep seeing your guesses in the chat. Just because I'm like, I can't think of who it could be. Someone who was hot then, hot now, married to someone famous. Okay, we're not going to try to guess, but you can guess in the chat. Okay. I mean, people are coming up with guesses. That's, we'll say that. We'll say that. She was a teen in 2012. No, not a teen. Not, not a teen. teen. Young, not younger, a teen then. but not a teen. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any more? Okay, I'm trying to think of some of my we've other got, stories. I, we've got I, we've got Adele Dazeem in a thong. Yeah, yeah. Broadway people are just they they don't have the same body boundaries as us. You know what I mean? Like Broadway people walk around naked. They're used to being like theatery weirdo hippie people. So she would answer the door and nothing all the time. And her body was incredible, incredible. Oh my god, incredible. I love that. I feel like I'm I was a theater kid in high school and I could see that. If I was like a famous hot, if I was a Dina yes, at Menza, yes, would, they're they're still that. married. They're still married. They're still married. That's my only clue. That's my only clue. We're gonna get this. We're gonna get the chat is gonna guess. You don't have to respond, but I know the chat they've, can do it. They, I oh, are they a a or a plus list? I think they. I think they're a list. I, that's all I'm saying. I don't want to get sued. okay. I know who it is. In my head, I, I know who it is. I'm not gonna say, but in my head, I know who it is. I will say this. I used to, um, before I signed anything, I always had this dog with me. And I would tell everybody whose dog it was. So Jack might have heard through the grapevine because I would bring this dog everywhere. It met all the UCB people. It was okay. always at pool parties. and like. But, but I'm not going to give any 
wink if anybody gets it right because I really don't want to get sued. So like, so you're having to sign all these like massive NDAs. Oh, they did full blown background checks on me and shit. What is that like? I don't know. I just basically gave them my information and they, and then they'd be like, guess what? You passed. I'm like, yeah, of course I did. I haven't done anything with my damn life. <laughs> yeah. You're 22. I'm 22. I, you know, I don't even, well, I had some parking tickets in my teenage years. Well, who but, hasn't, you know, sue me, sue me, please don't sue me. I mean, I welcome any law, any and all. Everybody lawsuits. thinks it's Mila and Ashton. Is it? I'm not, I'm not giving any. <laughs> I'm not giving any. I feel like you. I feel like it's not. I feel like it's not Mila and Ashton. I'm gonna go ahead and say I feel like it's not because they haven't been in the news lately. That's what. That's, that's what true. I'm gonna say. That's what I'm gonna say. That's true. That's true. They haven't. In it my might be mind, right under y'all's nose. I know who it is. In my head, I know who it is. I'm gonna ask you off the air, and maybe you're not gonna answer, and that's fine too. Okay. I'm trying to think if I have any more questions. I feel like. Oh, I have other stories. Okay, please so, just just go. So a lot of times I would be given dogs because my boss is a do was a dog trainer. So she would be given dogs to like train. And while she had them, I would walk them. And they were famous people's dogs. And I didn't know who they were, the, the famous people. Sometimes I would find out like a month later or whatever. There was this little Westie. No, a Scotty. It was a Scotty. A Scottish breed, right? And this dog was an asshole. It like chewed my car up, it shit in my car. I mean, it was really causing me grief. And his name was Dennis, which is very coincidental because he was a menace, in fact. Oh, he was he a was menace. Dennis the menace. I find out later, say. I find out later, guess who the dog belongs to? Who? Mel Gibson. Ooh. Well. Mel Gibson. And then I thought, why would we be walking Mel Gibson's dogs? And then it was, I realized it was actually his ex-wife's, but I still count it. I still count it. I count it. That's 10. I still that's, count it. Mel Gibson has probably met that dog. Yes. Well, but, but I think they were like, it was still like his, but the, he dealt, we dealt with the wife, but it was, I, I think it was before he like married that other lady and those like horrible phone calls came out and all that shit. Oh my god, I forgot about that. That was like, yeah. that was kind of like at the tail end of like weird, fucked up tabloid culture. Yes. Mid late two thousands world. Yes. That was a fucking crazy time. Okay. Which it is when you were walking time. dogs. You were walking dogs like kind of around. Well, no, two thousand twelve. I feel like was a pivotal year when celebrity like journalism shifted from the traditional way it always was to like social media which is yes. how it is now yes just i'm trying to place us in a place of history everybody i'm trying to give us a historical context here yeah it was a beautiful time it was it, it, it was. was really it was really before social media so like nobody would like photo i remember the very tail end of my dog walking i was like texting and not paying attention and one of my dogs shit and somebody literally walked down the street and, like filmed me like trying to shame me for not picking it up. Oh my and god! I was like, I'm literally about to pick it up, but I could tell this person was like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this person on next door and like shame them." This was before next door, but I was just right. like, "Get out of my face, dude!" Yeah, get out of Jackie's face, dude. I was a very responsible dog walker. I always picked up my shit. Always. I believe that. I believe. I would, I... Even, I would even pick up extra shit. I feel like you. I would trust you with my dog's life. Like you have a beautiful dog. We got a shout out the Chooch right now. Yeah. And, and Kenny, two beautiful little white fluffy gorgeous, dogs. Gorgeous girls. We love our girls and we can't have a conversation about dogs without shouting them out. I want to wrap us up here, but I have just kind of one more question. And if you have another story, like, please, I want to hear it. Um, so in general, like in the do celebrity dog walking scene, like did you meet other dog walkers? Did you like swap stories? Yes. Like honey, honey, there is a whole subculture in this town. Okay. There, if you go to the Laurel Canyon Mulholland Drive dog park, you will see the lifers. There are these two people. They wear safari outfits. They're a married couple. They drive a giant van with their faces painted on the side and like a beautiful green hill with them like running with all these dogs that's like spray painted on the side of their van 
and I can't remember their names, but they are total fucking characters. They're like Christian Wig and Will Ferrell, but real. And they run their own little dog walking thing, and they take the whole corner of the dog park, and if anyone goes over there, they're like, this is my turf. This is my turf. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sorry, I thought this was a public park. They're like, no, this is my turf. And they like, if they walk any celebrities' dogs, they love to shout them out, and I'm just going to say it because I don't think it's right to like tell your clients. They would always brag. They were like, this is America Ferreira's dog. This is America Ferreira's dog. And they would like brag about whose dogs it were. They were. And I'm just like, first of all, rule number one, <laughs> celebrity dog walker, don't tell your clients. Don't tell your clients. Yeah, come on. Also, like America Ferreira's dog, like what kind of clout do you think that's going to get you? Like, I mean, this was sort of ugly Betty era. OK, OK, you know you're right. I mean? You're right. I'm not, I mean, but no I'm shade, just... no shade to America. I think she's a, a wonderful star. Yes, first rule of dog club, we don't talk about dog club. We don't talk about dog club. Yeah, it should be it sh be cool about it. Be is, cool about it. You gotta be chill. And also, like, I would, I, I say I walked celebrity dogs, and then I would say I walked celebrity dogs. I walked some famous dogs as well. Oh, okay. Can you, you I can't walked, say, or can you say? Well, I walked dogs that worked all the time. I walked dogs that were like in commercials, you know, Super oh. Bowl commercials, movies. These are some big dogs. I used to walk the Basset Hound that that sneezed in I Am Sam. I wow. mean, I walked some celebrity dogs. One time I was walking this dog that's pretty known among a certain amount of people because uh, a pop star, like a, a, a rock and roll star's dog. And this dog was like on the cover of albums and in videos and things like that. And one time I was walking him at Fryman Canyon and this guy was like following me and he was like, I know whose dog that is. That's so-and-so. That's so-and-so. And I kept being like, uh, no, it's not, man. And he wouldn't leave me the fuck alone. Oh, my God. And, and then I had people do that to me when it was the wrong dogs, too. This one guy one time was like, I know that's George Clooney's dog. I know that's George Clooney's dog. And I'm like, no, it's not. Please oh my leave God. me alone. Wait, I, someone in the chat, please try to guess this famous dog that Jackie's hinting at. Cause they I have, are. Taco Bell Chihuahua dog from Frasier. None of these are right. but I, I, I can't. I have no idea. Like this dog. Beck's dog. These famous no, dogs. No, but I did meet Beck's kids in a green room once and had a very interesting conversation with them. Wow. Yeah. And it was dog related because my dog was on a shoot for a Beck video. I mean, your and dog. got cut out. You have a famous dog. I sort of do. My dog has definitely been in some videos. She's been in a Britney Spears video. Wait, I and don't think I knew this. I can't, but I can't tell you anything about it because that is the most extensive NDA I ever oh, signed I mean, in my life. I'm sure. I can't even imagine. Okay, what? Who do you think? Like, what do you think of the deal is? Because you know how Paris Hilton has like eight thousand dogs. Yeah, and they have their own like little McMansion House. by the pool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think she has like someone that's just? that just yes. walks those dogs like and is yes. like a full-time employee yes i hope so i hope so you would think i also feel like she needs to have a special license in order to have that many dogs because it's illegal is it yeah you're i'm trying to remember how many you're allowed to have in la county it's like you can't have more than five or something she's got more than five and sure. she also has like weird like a fair rate like i feel like she has other animals that are not okay well that was like her thing as a kid like i watched the paris documentary and it's all about how she was like a weird like yeah like not weird but like she was like a rich Animal girl who person. got whatever she yeah. wanted and her parents would just buy her all these animals well i'm the same i prefer the company of dogs to humans and if of i'm course. out of course i haven't been out in a year but i used to go out to parties and i just be like i just want to go home and hang out with chooch so, like, I love dog people, and there are a lot of celebrities that are, like, dog freaks, and their dogs are their best friends, and I walked a lot of those people's dogs, and it was honestly lovely to see. Have you ever encountered, first of all, I have to say, dog people are the best people. Yes. Dogs I trust are... dog people more than I trust Absolutely. I My whole life, I wasn't a dog person because I didn't grow up with dogs, and then I adopted Kenny, and it changed my life. I became a mother. Yes. I almost like I almost started breastfeeding her like I felt right. I felt that coming. As if she came out of your womb. Yeah, I felt like yes. my boobs could produce milk if I wanted them to. Um, mm -hmm. I, that's how motherly I became when I got my dog. Yes. And now I'm a dog person pro for life. But have you ever encountered a celebrity client that like wasn't good with their dogs and like, yes, was like actually problematic? Yes, yes. Yes. Um, several, several 
celebrities get rid of their dogs because they are too busy or they have a kid, like they give them away. That that's a very common thing. Yeah. You remember I... Ellen gave away her dog and she made a big old stink about it? No. Like, I... cried... Ellen gave away her dog and like cried about it on her show. Oh my you know, god. Like... I believe it. I, think... I, be- I believe it, Ellen. Yeah, and I, th- I think she did it because she um because she like got kind of called out for it or something. I don't exactly know, but yes, there are a lot of checked out slash shitty pet owners. I remember you don't have to you don't have to comment on this if you don't want, but I remember there was some story about when Chris Pratt and Anna Ferris were married, they like mm-hmm. had some chihuahua. They, they had pugs. I used to see him at the dog park all the time. Oh really? Yeah. I, I remember- talked to him for a really long time one time about his pugs. You talked to Chris Pratt about his pugs? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I feel like I, I I remember this story and maybe I'm making this up or I dreamt it, but I feel like they like because I put I ended up, I wrote a pilot about like Hollywood dogs <laughs> and I ended up putting somebody this, said Ellen was the hot nude celeb. Oh my god, yes, it was Ellen. DeGeneres. Y'all caught me. Y'all caught me. Sexiest body in Hollywood. <laughs> Jackie's horny for Ellen and we have to let that be public record here on the podcast. I, I accidentally slipped. What can I say? Oh, look, my cup has a dog. My cup has a dog on it. See? Oh, wow. That's a great. See, I kind of feel like I'll have a. I kind of feel like I'll have a chihuahua at some point in my life. Like Jack doesn't want a chihuahua, but I, I have this like because my great grandma was born and from Chihuahua, Mexico. <gasps> Wow. So I feel like I'm destined to have a chihuahua. So I think I every time I see a chihuahua, I'm just filled with joy. But anyway, I heard this rumor that Chris Pratt and Anna Ferris like their chihuahua was found and it was like all fucked up and it was like in the streets and like had been like abandoned. And apparently it was wow. one of those things where they gave the dog to someone and then that person like let the dog get lost and never tried to find them. I feel like I remember something like that, but before they were married and they were just dating they had a they got a pug together and then the pugs most people that get a pug end up getting two because pugs are sort of one of those animals where you they kind of are a duet like you need two you know what i mean like they kind of go together like a a, like a set i love that and and they got multiple pugs um and i i had a long conversation with him about pugs um and i knew who he was this was you know he wasn't a big movie star this was like parks and rec era yes Yes. This was like he was just a fun, fun TV guy yes. back then. Yes, yes. And that, that dog park is a celebrity sighting park, too. I saw so many celebrities there. I think I, just- I got to take Kenny there. I have to take Kenny because I used to live in Laurel Canyon, but that was before I got Kenny. So I never yeah. went to the Laurel Canyon dog park, but I know exactly where it is. And I've got to take Kenny there because I feel like as like a person that has a podcast about celebrities, like I need to do some investigative journalism and just see where the dogs are the celebrity yeah, dogs. It's, if you're good at spotting celebrities it, it would be a good spot i'm i can spot a z-list celebrity from across a room i i mean like i'm like oh my god there's Takar from top model getting her nails done like i can spot everybody i love that i i yeah. feel like i have that skill too and it's not everyone has it it's a rare talent not everyone has it although it's been a year i'm rusty you know i, I haven't, haven't yeah i haven't seen anybody i, I haven't, haven't been out and about I think I saw, I had think I had one celebrity sighting in COVID, and I think it was um, Kiernan Shipka, but she was wearing a mask, so I couldn't tell. Well, I I, I actually um, ran into the now president of the United States over the summer. Oh my God! Because you were in Delaware. Yeah. Wow. That and guy. he met Chooch. He met jo- Chooch. Too. Joseph Chooch Biden. really hobnobs with the celebs. Hey, Chooch is famous. Chooch has like Chooch is currying favors in dc now making legislation happen chooch is a lobbyist she's she is political she shit in front of the white house she when we were in texas she shit in front of the state capitol she makes statements wow wow okay jackie thank you so much we have to wrap up because we're way over time but oh chooch is my dog chooch is her dog the beautiful we could talk all night honestly i could could... talk dogs all night i could talk celebrities all night but i really do need to go get high and watch no we've got to let jackie go take her co what are you watching again coming to america too right coming to america too of course so we got to let you go but jackie everybody please subscribe to jackie's patreon listen to natch butte 
it's what is it patreon.com slash jackie johnson right yes and then my my podcast is called Nantribu, and it is a beauty podcast but it's a comedy podcast we talk about self-care so if you're interested in like hey should i be washing my face every day should i wear sunscreen you know we have fun it's a great um, pod it's a great great pod check it out and I'm just doing a rib, like a lyrical with this ribbon. As no, it's, I leave. I'm feeling it. It's a vibe. Yeah. Okay, everybody, thank you so much. And listen, we do this at the end of every show. Are Zach Braff and Florence Pugh still together? Yes, they are. And they're the best couple of all time. I've, I've heard that they're at, like actually really in love. I, I believe it. Like, I've heard it too. And um, I love them more than anything. Yeah. They're the best couple. Ever. I have like four Zach Braff stories, but that'll be another episode. Oh, you got to come back. Okay, Jackie, you're going to come back. Oh, you know what else? What? There's an episode on my Patreon called Celebrity Encounters, and it is, it, honey, the tea is piping hot. Okay, I got to check that out. I'm definitely going to check that out. Don't you dare send me the link. I'm <laughs> going to subscribe and pay I feel like US if you dollars. have, if you've lived in LA for longer than five years and you don't have a Zach Braff story, you deserve to move home. Because you haven't been fully living your life here. It, it's true. It's true. I, I have wacky, wacky Zach Braff stories. Wacky. Oh my God. I'm dying. I need and to know. And they don't involve dogs. And they're behind this pay. They're behind the paywall. You have the stories. Yes. Okay. I'm... It's a trusted, it's a trusted area. The, okay. The, the, the Patreon is a trusted space. Okay, everybody. Until next time. We'll be back next Friday. But until next time, stay hot. And stay rich and hot. I'm so fucking rich and really.